everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Son of Sam Chronicles. Thanks for coming back. Uh, we've got Carl DeNaro, who's our usual guest, Son of Sam shooting survivor. Uh, and we also have Neo back. Welcome back, Neo. We had a great show last week with you. We're glad you're back. We're going to talk about more things, unpack some more mysteries with this case and all that. Um, first thing I want to clear the air about one thing I mentioned last week about the Yankees doing really well in 77. And that was about the only thing good in New York. Well, I just want to make sure um, no one confuses me with a Yankee fan because I'm not. All right. <laughs> Rob, I had to stick it to you. <laughs> all right. Hey, anyway, last week we, we, we talked about quite a few things um, and the show did very well. Uh, thank you for the comments that were that were left. Uh, thank you for a couple of the trolls out there. But we appreciate your comments too because we know we're getting to you. Okay, but one thing I want to mention is the Voskerchian uh, shooting that we talked about. Uh, Neo, you had made a, a good question. You had said, you know, that Berkowitz's when he was arrested, his interrogation, he describes that shooting exactly the way Mr. Barlow had in 77. And your point was, how could he have known what Barlow said, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you know, some people after the show were very nice to put up some newspaper clippings uh, with these articles because Carl's point was that he read, read about it in the paper. He had time to do that. He read the papers all the time. Uh, and he pretty much knew point for point what Barlow had said for the most part, enough to come up with the same ideas, minus a few differences like the color of the watch cap and all that. So I just wanted to bring that out. And again, this is not critical of you, Neil. Okay. No, I this still, is, this is I not still think what was said happened. Right. You know, I mean, just because he could have read the article doesn't mean he didn't do it, you know? Yeah. And so it just... What that did, I was uninformed that that was out in the paper like that, but that opened the door now for that could have happened. It, it certainly doesn't solve the, the shooting, okay, but it, it shows that Brokowitz was aware of, of the interrogations and, and what people were saying about the shootings. He was reading about it in the paper, like everybody else. It right? Be this one, yep. yep, yep. Yeah, that's one example. I think you have more, right? Yep. Yeah, and just yeah. Uh, so for anyone that's watching, uh, if, you know, if you're on the unofficial, um, uh, the unofficial uh, Facebook group or the official Facebook group, these articles have been uh, posted by uh, various members, so you can go and take a look. Yeah. And of course, if you want to join either one of the groups, uh, feel free to uh, to uh, ask ask for. Uh, admittance to the group yep and so where the admins will take care of you yeah and there's great people in those both those groups that really do a lot of research and come up with great theories and ideas so definitely join up um okay so let's let's get into the meat and potatoes for today um what we wanted to get into and and again you know <laughs> we all talk before the show and and come up with different ideas to throw around what what we decided on today was to talk about some of the occult aspects of the son of Sam. Uh, also what went on in Minot a little bit, we're going to talk about, um, Neil, I'll start with you. Um, I know a lot of your research, you, you know, you've, you've looked at stuff going on in Untamaya park. Okay. And Untamaya is a big part of the case, but, some things you found that Maury Terry wrote kind of disputes that a little bit. Go into that detail a little bit. Well, I, I do feel that a lot of his information came from uh, the guy that I found that you seen witness all those rituals. If you go back, I think it was 85 or 87, you know, Maury had ran into him in the park. And this kid, you know, I've talked to quite a bit. He, um, he still lives here in Yonkers. And, um, <clears throat> I think Maury basically got a lot of the stuff that he wrote about with the devil worshiping from this kid. 
we spent two days in the park. They were reenacting um, the stuff. So I, I don't know if Maury actually even did a lot of research in Uncle Myers, if I think about it. I reached a lot of people from that park that never were contacted by him. Um, also, the Mr. Williams Hall. I mean, people hanging out in the park that were never contacted by Maury? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know two guys that specifically slept there for a while, you know, hung out in the park a lot. They, you know, he never he never ran into them and asked them anything. So I, I think a lot of the stuff that he reported at Onomars was a two day stay with this kid, giving him all this stuff that went on there with the devil worshippers that this kid was seeing. And then he connected the two. Um, like I was saying, Mr. Williams Hall, we clearly now know what that is. I mean, he, uh, Berkowitz says in the letter that uh, he was reading a book on a serial killer and he wrote on walls a serial killer. And also, when I talk to older people that are in the parks in the 70s, they never heard of Mr. Williams Hall. Um, he, he refers to Anta Myers because of the gutters. Okay. The gutters path runs right behind Car House and, and um, Berkowitz's apartment over there. So the stack with the path is the gutter is there too by Wicker. It's not just that Untermeyer. So I don't know where he connected Untermeyer. Uh, a couple of things spray painted. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how he connected Untermeyer. Call, jump in here. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I have a totally different date than you, Neo. But, <laughs> but, he, but he, he, his, here's what we have in common. I don't know either. Um, <clears throat> The only, the only, the only information we have from Maury Terry is, is, and again, I, I, you know, if you're saying two days, and maybe that's true, I, I certainly don't think he spent a whole lot of time, um, doing a deep dive into Untermeyer Park, um, but with that said, I think everyone agrees, even mori to anti mori terry people everyone agrees there there's a uh, a, a satanic uh, uh happenings going on on Tamaya park um i i don't think that's a, i don't think that's in dispute anymore i mean every uh, everyone you talk to everyone uh mori talked to there's definitely you know the nurses and doctors at the hospital heard the chanting uh you know billy the artist uh drew, drew some pictures so there's definitely satanic cult now is it tied to the son of sam that's that's where you know mm. I, I can argue either point to be quite honest with you i could jump on your side in, in a heartbeat and uh come up with a whole bunch of stuff like you said two days two days with this guy and that's where maury got his stuff from um i i, I can't argue the point um and that's what i think you know and and again i i have no information uh besides maury terry um, that uh, that there was a connection there. The only do you, you know, and uh, let's face it, it, it's not much of a leap if if you're if you're Maury Terry, and um, you're hearing about this this uh, satanic stuff, and then uh, and then you know you read the letters that uh, the, the son of Sam Shooter left. You put two and two together and say, you know, and plus the fact that you know. Um, you know, the cars lived close on Tamaya Park. Uh, Berkowitz lived in Yonkers. Um, it, it, to me, it's very easy for Maury Terry to, to jump to that conclusion. And maybe it's not a good conclusion. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. But, um, but you, I, I don't know. Well, look, you got you to give some credence to um, fact number one. There's satanic activity going on yes. on Tamaya Park. We, we all agree with that. <laughs> you know, the connection to the son of Sam. I admit it's weak, um, uh, but again, does that really change the case? Um, well, Carl, that's 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 a good point. Okay, uh, if you just m let me interrupt for a second. Sure. sure. Um, when was the first mention by Berkowitz of Untermeyer Park? Because he did say that there's comments of his that he said he was there. I don't right. remember when that was though. Like it was it was late seventies, early eighties. I'll be honest with you. I don't remember, but okay. but I do want to add this, uh, th and this is what makes this case so so freaking difficult to uh, to wrap your hands around because we have information from Maury Terry, we have information from Berkowitz himself, 
And within that sub, within that group, we have subgroups. You have Berkowitz's uh, testimony uh, in '77 in August when he was arrested. We have testimony <laughs> uh, from Berkowitz writing letters to Dr. Abramson. We have uh, David Berkowitz's testimony in '93 with a face-to-face -face interview with Maury Terry. Um, you got all these different newspaper articles. Uh, the recent data dump uh, with the uh, written reports and and uh, audio uh, interviews. You can't take any one of them by themselves. I, I think I, I think even the most um, uh, faithful Maury Terry fan uh, would have to admit that you can't just use the ultimate evil as as you no. guide. No, uh, but on the other hand, you can't take any any one of those things I just mentioned. You can't take them by themselves and and come to a conclusion. Somehow, we have to combine Maury Terry's information, Berkowitz's information, the Queen's DA's information, the police reports, the newspaper articles, the the TV shows, the live interviews, and try to figure out what's true and what's not true. And that that that's a, a tall task. Let, let me let me just throw this out there. Uh, and Neo, you can comment on this when I'm done. We know that Berkowitz was interested in the occult. OK, if you go by the theory that he was the only shooter, just for argument's sake. OK. And he wrote the letters. There's the references in the letters to the occult, the symbols, the, the, the symbolism of the shooting at Eliphas, okay, Eliphas being a major occult figure, okay, himself. Uh, then you have John Carr, okay, and you have John Carr, several people that were interviewed up in Minot saying he was, you know, in the occult, Phil Falcon, I believe, saying that, you know, he witnessed the ritual with John Carr there, I believe. Um, you know, you have all this kind of circumstantial evidence happening at the same time. John Carr and you have Berkowitz. I don't think it's a leap, a big leap to combine that together, that these things were happening, OK, in relation to each other in some way. We just don't know how. We don't know how Carr knew Berkowitz. We don't know. Right. What do you think? No, we don't know. There's no cement on that. No. But we do know, you know, again, it, it, uh, another source that I, that I didn't mention, I, I said police reports, but all those interviews that the police did in uh, North Dakota, um, there's at least, at least three people uh, in North Dakota state to the police that David Berkowitz was there hanging out with John Carr. But well, wait a minute. But didn't in the interview with Maury Terry on that tape, I mean, did it sound like to you or am I just making that up that the DA sounded a little frustrated that he had to go out to North Dakota and came up with nothing? And then Maury's then saying that, oh, well, I got this lady. I got one lady. And, and he won't know. give it up. He won't yeah, give up. This I mean, is it me or did the guy sound a little frustrated that he is listening to Maury and went out to Minot and got nothing? Yeah, I, no, I, I agree. I, and again, go, it goes back to my point of we got to take every all these sources that we have and and look at them combined. I, I totally agree with you on that one interview. But what I, what I actually was referring to was the um, the written the written um, uh, what would you call it? interview? Yeah, written interviews that um, that Noop and uh, Gardner did with Phil Falcon. And uh, and 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 forgive me, I forget the names. Uh, Barry DeSanco, maybe. Well, I, I don't think Barry was uh, uh, was uh, interviewed, but um, well, uh, in, se in in seventy nine he was. That's what I meant. No, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm I'm not even sure when those. Um, these are the. This isn't part of the data dump. Oh. Uh, this was prior to the data dump. There was information, and I'm not sure who got it or where they got it, but it was posted on Facebook. And it was uh, just a bunch of uh, interviews um, 
with uh, again with uh, I, I specifically remember Phil Talk, and I know I keep going back to that. But there was um, you know uh, uh, John Carr's girlfriend. Um, uh, uh, geez, I I just can't. Dar- Darlene and help me out here, fellas. Yeah. Uh, 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 Darlene. Darlene Christensen. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they all talk about. They all talk about. I mean, Phil Falcon talks about John Carr doing a, a satanic ritual in his living room when he walked in the house and he kicked them out. He said, "What you know? What, what yeah. are you doing? It's, you know." Um, and other people, uh, Wheat Carr says she was in in North Dakota now. That doesn't make her guilty or bad or anything else. Her brother lived there, so she was visiting her brother. And but, he died. Uh, but, but other but other people said that Berkowitz was there. He he was introduced as Berkey. Who said that? And it, we're gonna have to go back. I <laughs> I apologize. Uh, no, I'm not, I don't want to do that. I don't want to call you out and yeah, like, yeah, no, no, that, that's I fine. just you know, if you have stuff that I, I'm not aware of, I'd love yeah, to know. Yeah. It's not I'm trying to call I, you yeah. out. I'm pretty sure it's posted on the uh, in the official uh, uh, Facebook group, but uh, I will. Um, I, I if it's not, I will post it so everyone else can see it. Um, and and I I apologize. I broke one of my cardinal rules: don't open your mouth unless you can prove what you're saying. <laughs> Who came back with these reports? The I'm not sure. I'm not sure who who got them and who posted them, but I am sure that. These were um, these were interviews that um, that uh, I believe Terry Gardner, who was a uh, 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 Minot, uh, North Dakota uh, police department detective, and uh, and knew uh, K N O O P. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if I'm pronouncing yeah. it right, um, but they they did these interviews. Um, they were also th- those the, the two guys that I'm talking about were uh, were also featured in the. Uh, Josh Siemens uh, documentary, uh, but wasn't um, wasn't it when you mentioned the uh, uh, John Carr doing a ritual? Okay, in, in the guy's living room, Danny Boone was another character that was supposedly at that yes. and involved in involved in the ritual as well. Right. Okay. The, again, and I apologize for for not having uh, an exact source, but you're right. Dan, 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 Danny Boone is another. Another one of the people that I'm referring to that were interviewed, uh, you know, back in the day in North Dakota. And also, if you go to the 79 interviews with, like, for instance, Barry DeSanko, all right, he says that there was a guy from New York with John Carr, didn't know who he was. Right, right. I, you know, could have been Berkowitz, we don't know. Okay. Yeah. I don't think he gives a description, though. So no, he doesn't. Yeah. Not in the '79 one, right? Uh, you know, it also uh, there was also something called uh, the, the outside of outside of Minot. Somebody like Danny Boone, I believe, was was affiliated with the Blue Druid Bookstore in Salt Lake City, in Utah. Okay, so. You know, some of these people were definitely into, into the occult, all right, that were around Carr. Okay, we know that. Right. Uh, you know, again, it, it, it just doesn't, it just, you know, you can't cement Berkowitz with Carr. That's what yeah. you have to do somehow. It's very, what we're talking about now is very similar to trying to tie the son of Sam to Untermeyer. I mean, yeah. we, know, we know that Untermeyer had satanic stuff. Well, uh, you know, I I don't think anyone is questioning that, and if they are, I I, I don't know what to tell you because people outside of Maury Terry, like I said, doctors and nurses reported he, uh, hearing the chanting. Um, you know, it, it happened. I gave right. it a guy. He witnessed exactly. over forty rituals. It was right. going on a hundred percent. So, but we have a problem connecting it to Son of Sam. Yes. and I get it. So, same thing with with North Dakota. We have. Uh, in my opinion, conclusive proof that John Carr was involved in satanic stuff um, in North Dakota. We also reported have, not only by Maury. You're saying the cops are killed. exactly the cops. By, by the yeah. cops. And yeah. we also have these same people saying that David Berkowitz was there uh, visiting John Carr. Uh, I, I I would like to see that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, you you've seen it, right? I'm not making this up. Right? Yeah, no, I, you I, never I, make anything up. 
It just, yeah. I just I have, wanna, you know, no, check off for myself. Everyone's got to realize that, that every now and then you got to cut me a break because I'm not, I'm not saying you're not Neil, but, but I want to make this clear that um, I've been, I've been looking at this uh, first as a, a casual victim for 15 years and then the next 35 years or the next 30 years uh, as a, a, an active researcher trying to find answers. I, there's so much information. Um, if, if you, if you've been into this case for more, more than a year, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's so many different tentacles um, and so many different sources and so much um, uh, besides what we know, what we think is true based on, again, police reports, the ultimate evil, newspaper articles. Then there's other stuff that's thrown in uh, from casual viewers um, that sometimes, uh, you know, something gets stuck in your head and it's like, where did I hear that from? Is it something I read? Is it legitimate? Or is it just some some screwball coming up with his own theory? And that's what I'm remembering. So uh, I, I just I just wanted to throw that in there because uh, I, I, you know, I certainly um, I don't need to make anything up. Um, but but on occasion, I do uh, I do misspeak and I might um, I might attribute a quote to. To Maury Terry when it really wasn't him. It could have been somebody else, uh, you know, that, that I heard it from. But all right, I'm going to stop rambling. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good stuff here. Um, hey, uh, Mike. Um, yeah. And um, Carl, you guys remember the murder that happened um, out of state that um, when um, when uh, Maury Terry asked David Berkeley, he had detail of it? You talk about Carl Terry? You talk about all this, Perry? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that, you know, uh, it, 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 it's an interesting part of the, the book, okay? He goes into a lot with it. I think Maury might have gone into it a little too much. Okay. okay. You've seen what he left, Maury, right? Now that, you know, do you, do you think he meant to do that? He left in the book and then Maury just went and looked at that? Because you see it the he doesn't directly say that he had something to do with it. He was saying that she was, what, followed, chased, or whatever the hell it said right. in the book. You know, I mean, Berkowitz really took that out of context, or or Berkowitz had given him more information on that. I think Berkowitz gave him information that a lot of people didn't know, other if you yeah. were a cop. Right. Huh. Yes. Yeah. Supposedly he wrote, supposedly Berkowitz wrote, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, followed. Uh, I, I forget the exact quote, but you know, Stork followed to uh, yeah. Palo Alto. Um, the, I mean, the, the, you know, the facts that, as we know them, is she was from that area. She, I believe she was from Bismarck, which is not far from Minot. not not far from Minot. Yeah, right. And um, she was like a uh, you know, like a born again type, you know, uh, you know, real true blue true blue Christian, and um, and you know, she. Moved to uh, to Palo Alto and uh, was murdered like I don't know six months after she moved there. Um, that that so far everything I just said is pretty much fact. After that, everything is in my opinion pure conjecture, and uh, mm. it's one of the things I know. Uh, certain people like to um, uh, misquote me and say, even, you know, even Carl says Maury was wrong. Well. Uh, you know, I've never said, never ever said that Maury Terry was 100% correct. In fact, the night I met him, within 10 minutes of shaking his hand and introducing myself, I told him, uh, you know, I, I love your book, but you should have stopped 150 pages sooner. Um, <laughs> uh, and just the whole, the whole California thing, it may be true, but we have less, in my opinion, we have less information on that whole California thing from Orlis Perry to Manson than yeah. we do on tying the son of Sam to Untermeyer. So I, I have never, in the 35 years I've been looking into this, I've done, I'll be honest with you, I've done very little work looking into Orlis Perry because the connections are North Dakota and and a ritualistic murder in a church in, in uh, San, San Francisco. Well, what, what, I, what I think is what I think is important 
about the Aulis Perry thing in relation to the son of Sam is Berkowitz was told about this supposedly at, at you know, it was either a or, 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 or a cult, a cult meeting. Right. Okay. And he was told about this by another person who was in the occult. Okay. That's the, that's the occult connection. First of all, he's at this meeting and he hears about a murder from, you know, two years prior across the country. Now, these were, this was the 1970s. This was not the days of, of now with the internet and easy right. access to read about these things. Nobody in New York heard about all this Perry. It wasn't in the paper. It, it, that's the only, you know, it's, it's hard to think about those days. We're so used to it now. But back in those days, the newspaper was your main information. Right. Yeah, for, yep. for the public, for the public. Yeah, yeah. I, and Mike, Mike I, I, I can buy that story, and I did buy that story to a certain degree. Yeah. But, um, just let's just play, you know, what if. Um, well, yeah. What uh, if, you know, the if, details of it. What if Parker right, if, if Parkowitz wanted to just see <laughs> Maury Terry? Or, okay. Or, or even even a bigger picture, he wanted to deceive the world okay. about his actions and uh, his actions, uh, be it he acted alone or he was part of this big cult. Right. So he, you know, basically, I guess what I'm getting at is it's, it's very possible this information was planted. So Maury Terry would take it and tie it into the son of Sam and make the story that much less believable. Because wow. I, 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 you know, I, I've said this from day one, you know, that whole, the whole California thing, uh, it just to me, ruin, not ruined, but um, it took away, it, it took away from the, the son of Sam story. I think Maury Terry has the son of Sam story down. Pretty good. Maybe 90%. 80% anyway, but when you throw in the California stuff, the number goes, mm. <laughs> you know, it goes, my, the percentage of truth goes way down, in my opinion, you know, and, and it's not a knock on Maury, um, you know, he got information, well, who's to say, who's to say I'm right, uh, you know, we'll, we'll probably never know, uh, and who's who's to say Maury didn't take the story and said, you know, this, this, this could jazz up the book. And I'm going to put all this Perry in there. It's it's yeah. certainly possible. Yeah, you have to take it into consideration, absolutely. right? So, you know, you know, I, I'm I'm not. Um, I can I can certainly be swayed uh, if if you if someone comes up with an argument saying Orwell's Perry had nothing to do with with Son of Sam. I, I could, you know, I I, I could I could buy that. But I could also argue it the other way, as you pointed out. How did Berkowitz know about it? You yeah. know, so it's it's just one of those things that uh um I, I you know I you go, you go either way. Or, or or it's both. It's both. Or, or yeah. I mean think my, about it, Neil. Think about it. If he if he was, you know, legitimately in, in a cult, found about out about this at a meeting, okay, and and Maury says, Hey, this this could jazz up the book a little bit too. Let's what throw it. What are supposed to do? You know, you're doing an investigation. Yeah. You get yourself in with the main guy. He's, yeah. I got articles of him saying John Carl was involved. I mean, yeah. he's feeding right. Maury all this stuff. What do you want Maury to do? Not pay yeah. attention to it? Right. You know, so I'm the whole to get mad at Maury, but at the same time, he's trying to do the case, and he's dealing with the most important person of it, and this guy is giving him all this stuff. I mean, what, could you tell me what you would like Maury to do with his information? That's a great point. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's yeah. That, that's been my defense of Maury Terry all along. It's like if he, Burke would played him in some way on any of the any of the interviews or letters back and forth that they wrote. How 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 is he number one? How's he supposed to know? And number two. What is he supposed to do with that information? It's just too good. You have to, you have to throw it in there. Yeah, you gotta, you're doing investigation. You got to act on what he gave you. I mean, right. you got to find nothing. You know? yeah, Who's yeah. the bad guy, right? Who, and when you have guy? no ending to a lot of the stuff that he gave him, yeah. here we are 45 years later. Right. Right. That's amazing. And we're still trying to figure out what the hell happened with all these murders. <laughs> all this stuff, you know? Well, there's he two keeps his fire going. Yeah. I, you know, I certainly 
for, uh, for, uh, for reasons other than solving a case, I, uh, I certainly wish Maury was still around uh, because uh, regardless of what has been said, I do miss the guy. Uh, we, we used to have some really good conversations. Yeah. Um, but uh, on, on the other side of the coin, it would be really great for Maury to be in, in a fifth box in the show. Yeah. Uh, tell, telling us what, you know, telling us where he came up with the information, why he came up with it, and so on and so forth. Um, and the only other person that could help us out in this respect is um, Mr. Barkowitz himself. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm i a very um, optimistic guy, and um, I still hold out hope that um, that I will get answers from Barkowitz. Um, and I know, I know what the naysayers are going to say. You know, you're going to get answers from a liar. Um, mm. As of right now, there's not much else we can go on um, exactly. except with the information we have. And uh, again, if Berkowitz ever sits down with me again and decides to talk and tell me some things, I'm going to take that information, just like I, I've kind of, uh, you know, told told you guys and told the audience. I'm going to take that information and I'm going to compare it to what Maury said. I'm going to compare it to the newspaper articles. I'm going to compare it to that data dump, the uh, the you know the the police reports that we have, the uh, the audio, uh, the, uh, you know, the witness um, the witness tapes that we have, and and see if I can kind of pull out the truth and eliminate the lies. And uh, and if anyone's got a better idea, I'm all ears. But uh, right now, that seems to be the way we should we should uh, go forward with this. I, I think I've always said I think a lot of the answers to the case is going to come from Berkowitz. Okay, yeah. uh, and and of course evidence around the shootings too. Okay, uh, witnesses and and other evidence around the shootings. That's where the answers are going to come from. Some of these like peripheral things, all as Perry being the the biggest one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, don't really matter. They don't. Yeah. I mean, very, they, it, very interesting. It's place. interesting, and it, it ties. You know, it, it kind of adds some, makes it more elaborate, or whatever you want to say. But it, but it, 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 it doesn't solve the case. Berkowitz knowing about all this Perry. Okay. Right. What, so what does that do? I, I just, I just thought of this as we're, we're talking about this. Um, you know, we all know Manson, <clears throat> Manson too. Um, has been identified as Bill Metzer. We also know that Neil, you're aware of that, right? Okay, yes. so Bill Bill Menzer is in, in jail in California for the murder of Roy Raiden. Um, so it, again, this is one of these things where it's like Maury had to be one hell of a storyteller to tie all this shit together. Um, but, uh, anyway. You know, Menser supposedly is Manson too. Supposedly Menser did the um, uh, the Freud shooting. Uh, we don't know if this is true, but that's the story. But what we do know is Menser is in jail for the mur murder of Roy Raiden, who you know who definitely has ties to his son of Sam. For those of you who don't know, um, this is not this is not um, uh, some made up story. Uh, he was known to parade around the Hamptons. Uh, he, he had a big, huge, I don't know, 20, 20 Roy room mansion, Roy Raiden. And he walked around in a black cape and a, and a staff. And, yeah. and he was delivery, interested in Satanism, too. Right. And delivery people have been to the house delivering pizza and food and what have you. And they have said that one, one guy said he knocked on the door to deliver pizza, opens the door, and it was a, a dominatrix. Um, standing in front of him with with a seventy year old man on all fours with a dog uh, a dog collar and a chain. Uh, it, that, you know. Anyway, so all this stuff all this stuff ties in again. It's like it, 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 as yeah. my dog is barking. <laughs> oh, no. Like someone push a button. That was too good. Time. As my dog starts barking. All right, go ahead. The dog got so, excited. So the, but the bottom line is is. Uh, uh, you know, Mentor is in jail for, for Roy Raiden's murder, and, uh, and and if I'm not mistaken, this was this was after after Maury um, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Maury didn't even write his book yet. He was in the process of writing it when this all happened. But he he was instrumental in getting Roy um, uh, Menser uh, charged with the crime, and and he was convicted. Now, one one last side note on this on this story: uh, a New York Post reporter, uh, Jamie Schramm, went went out to visit uh, Menser, and he went out on a a, a totally different. Uh, Bent. He basically went out to talk about the Roy Raiden murder that Menzer's in jail for. Yeah. And uh, like halfway through the interview, he uh, dropped, you know, he, he dropped the whole thing. You know, were you, um, were you, are you Manson too? And uh, according to Jamie Schramm, um, this is, I'm, I'm retelling the story that Jamie Schramm uh, said. His face turned white as a ghost. And he refu- and the interview stopped right there. His, you know, his jaw dropped, face turned white as a ghost, and the end. And that was the end of the interview. Kind of like, how'd you know that? Yeah, like, t- yeah. take it for what it's worth. Uh, you yeah. know, who knows? Uh, you know, and, and that's I pretty much, pretty much. I told you everything I know about the uh, uh, Menser, uh, and again, this whole Manson two thing. But the that goes back to Manson two is is Maury Terry. That goes back to the point I'm, I was making earlier: is is the, the, the case the case is going to be solved by evidence around the shootings? If Menzer ever came out oh, on his deathbed, whatever something, okay, and says, "Yeah, I'm Manson too. I did the Freud shooting." Oh, okay, I shot he, Christine he, Freund. Yeah, he, he's it, it, you know, I mean, I've never really said this uh, publicly, but. Uh, He's one of the, he's one of the several people that are still alive that could actually uh, uh, shed light, re- reopen the case, or shed light on on mm-hmm. what we know. Uh, and I said, I, my guess is he's a, he's a, he's in jail for for life for the Roy Raiden murder. Um, my guess is he probably still still holds out hope that he could get out uh, on parole. Um, but if it ever comes to the point where he knows he, he he's convinced himself that he's never going to get out, or as you put, point out, he's on his deathbed. Who knows? Maybe maybe he'll maybe he'll uh, come clean on his deathbed. And um, if, if that was to happen, that would be such a blockbuster because sure. it, would, it would it would it would prove that point of more than one shooter and and you know possible you know even the you know cult yeah. reference. Right. It still won't end, dude. It still well, will not end. It'll never be ended. No. We'll it would be able to open the case. Right. Yeah, we'll, I think, yeah, we'll never, I don't think we'll ever get all the answers to all the questions. No. But um, as long as I'm still breathing and alive, I'm going to continue to try to get as many answers as I can. And uh, and I think that should be everyone's goal. Anyone that's interested in the son of Sam, that should be your goal to, you know, uh, solving the case is, is that's a pretty lofty goal, but um, but you know, chipping away at the story and, and coming up with conclusive proof on certain aspects of it, um, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe we will solve it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep trying, though. I know that. Well, that's that's the ultimate goal. Yep. You know, that's why you're out there, Neil. Pounding the bricks, trying to find all this information. You want to get to the bottom of it, you know. And, and by the way, you know, I, I'll I'll say this publicly. I won't I won't give any names, but I, I but I have a list of names I want you to uh, go check out for me, Yonkers. You got. I know it. I know you're good at that. You um, give them to me yeah. today. Done tomorrow. I, uh, sounds wow. good to me. <laughs> yeah. So somebody somebody sent me a list of names and um, pretty interesting and. Uh, and it has to do with the actual shootings, not periphery stuff, as, as Mike pointed out. So, <laughs> Give yeah, me this, some. <laughs> I, 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 I need some I, help. I immediately thought of you when I got this list. I'm like, what am I going to do with it? And I'm like, Neo. Neo's the one. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 I just want to wanna talk about um, something me and Carl had talked about on the phone earlier uh, before the show. Um, you know, the idea of 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 um, the twenty two, okay, 
uh, existing or not existing. Okay. And, uh, Carl, you, you, you brought up something about the 22, possibly meaning 22 Wicker Street. Yeah. I, I, again, this is one of those things that I never, uh, I shouldn't say never, uh, but, you know, from, from the letter, the 22 disciples of hell. I mean, yeah, at first glance, what, what else would you think that means except there's 22 disciples of hell? You know, I mean, it's 22 right. Well, but as we got into this, um, uh, I've never, I've never seen a list of 22. Uh, even Maury Terry, uh, uh, he never, you know, we, we discuss this case all the time. And, um, you know, he used to tell me, and he, he posted this on Facebook, I believe he identified like 13. And he said, he alluded that the, the, uh, the remaining 22, um, the 13 are dead. So he had no problem saying that, but the other, whatever my best. Nine. Is, thank you. <laughs> the other nine are still alive. So he's not, he's not going to talk about it. Um, mm. I call bullshit on that. Um, uh, much later, actually a couple of years ago, um, uh, Max Max uh, was in contact with a with a, a detective from a retired detective. I'm not even sure. I think he's NYPD, but he lives in Connecticut. Um, he gave he gave Max a list of the 22. And as soon as I saw it, I said, uh, "This is trying to fit like a, a round a round peg in a square hole." Um, it, it it just looked too contrived trying to come up with 22 names to put to put on a list. Um, I don't, re- I'll be honest with you. I don't remember the names, but there's people, there's people that are attributed to be the 22 disciples that, um, they're, they're no way they're, they're, you know, they, 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 you know, their names might've been mentioned within the son of Sam, but there's no way they're part of this cult. So I, I've, I've, you know, and I, I, I really think that 22, um, was just a re- I think it was a reference to 22 Wicker Street. Um, Neil, what do you think about that? All right, because you've done so much yeah. work in the area. I, I think that's possible. I think he could have been referring to 22, but what, what I thought was, especially after reading the clause, he was talking about demons, you know, that he served. You know, when he shot somebody, they would take the victim's soul, bring them to the attics that were at 1822, 316 Walburton. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going with, disciples of hell are demons okay so i see him writing about him serving demons okay at mm-hmm. these these houses okay disciples of hell are demons 22 is a number uh, i don't know if there's a certain uh number or someone I he think anytime, I think, uh, i'm just gonna go on a limb here i'm pretty sure about this but i think anytime you have two numbers of the same together in and again, I'm not 100% sure, but I think anytime 2277, okay, it, there's, there's a magical, mystical kind of power to that. Um, and just to mention, 1977 was when most of these killings happened, all right? So there was a lot of occult activity in the world in 77. That's been proven, right? Uh, there's a great... And I just noticed because I'm rocker Mike. There's there's a great uh, reggae song called Two Sevens Clash, okay, by a band called Culture that came out that year. They had an album called Two Sevens Clash, and they speak about how, you know, it was meant that this is a magical year. Things are going to happen this year. So anytime you put two numbers together, like 22 or 77, you get that. But go ahead, just threw that in. You know, you know, in the letter, you got the passage, you got the two dogs. It was King yeah. and Duke. It was King yeah. and Duke. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, but you, you got that grouping together. He thinks yeah, John yeah. Carr is a, 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 you know, so a demon. Right. The demons, and then the two demons and the dogs. So I'm just right, thinking right. he's talking about demons on Wicker there. So, so I'm, I, thinking I'm thinking 22 the 22 disciples. Is 22 Wicker. You know, the yeah, Duke it could death be. is the dog, is the dog Duke. You know, I, I'm going along with you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Um, I, like I said, I, I, I never really thought, um, especially with see, seeing the list, uh, I never thought it was 22 people in, in, you know, in that group and, and Maury himself eliminated a bunch of people 
for example, uh, Susan Conway and um, and uh, Ken Norton, he he publicly states that although they were in the cult, they were never at a shooting scene. So, it, so now you're gonna, you know, I, I I thought it was a bit of a stretch to add those two people as part of the 22 people in the cult. So that that was the first. The first reason why I started questioning uh, if, if the 22 disciples of hell is actually talking about 22 different people. I I, I tend to uh, go along with, with your theory a little bit more than 22 people. Yeah, I thought 22 was a lot of people. I mean, you commit a crime, 22 people involved means definitely 44 are involved because they told somebody. And I don't, you know, this this case has been kept so tight. I just can't see 22 people having information and it's so tight like this. Like there's yeah. not one person that you guys can 100% say, 100% say was with David Berkowitz. So, yeah. you know? Oh yeah. It's, it, it's not easy. That's, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it, it's certainly good to discuss it because, um, they like said, there's, uh, until, until we have what we think a hundred percent true story, anything's possible. You know, we really shouldn't throw anything out, uh, you know, out, out the window um, until, until until we can conclusively prove it has nothing to do with the case. If there's if there's a slight doubt, it's we, you still got to keep it in play. OK, guys, um, I want to just bring up something that I haven't heard anybody talk about yet. OK, uh, in this new information dump that came out back in uh, was it June already, I think. Um, there's that one interview, it's, it's actually, I think three interviews together, uh, by that woman, Dona Farmer. Have you had a chance to go through those at all, Neo? Carl? No. Okay. We'll maybe, that for another show. maybe we'll talk about it for another show, but, but I find it very interesting because there's three tapes of this, uh, Amienti does, I think all of them with her and she came to the police after the sketches came out of the Moskowitz murder. Okay. The very last one. And she thought that, um, she thought that the sketch looked like her ex-boyfriend, a guy named Ivan. Okay. And, uh, Ivan Baragas. And, uh, the first tape you're like, okay, maybe she, you know, is, is maybe it's true. Maybe that, maybe there's something to this. Okay. The second and the third tape goes off the rails. Okay, we'll go into this in another show. Okay, uh, but if you guys could listen to them, because they start, she starts talking about she was part of a cult, or even that they were programmed to kill. Okay, which I don't know if you know. I'm going to have to listen to it again myself. I did take quite a few notes of it, uh, but. That these people in this cult, including this Ivan person and and herself as well, this Dona Obama, uh, were programmed to assassinate. Also, uh, they were talking about uh, a lot of trained dogs in this cult. Mm. That got me thinking about the other stuff. Okay, uh, it was called the Circle of Friends. Have you have you you guys didn't listen to these at all, huh? Well, there, is this this is part of the uh, the data dump? The data dump that came out, yeah, recently. All right, I thought I thought I listened to all the audio tapes. Apparently. Yeah, it, it was uh, one of the first. I've been doing this on my phone, uh, as you know. I just I I, I, I think just it was the the fifth, it, If I if I went in order, which I think I did, it was number five in the in, okay. in, in that the fifth one down. And it's it's very interesting because either this lady is totally nuts, okay, and off the wall and has nothing to do with the case, yeah. or there's something there's like smoke there. There's something, okay. okay. You got, you got we'll my talk interest. about that next week. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look at. I'll, I'll, yeah, I thought I I thought I listened to them all, but I definitely did not listen. There was to so it. much. I I went through all the tapes. I haven't gone through all the written stuff yet. I know. I know, Neil, you, you started with that. You were doing the arrest records and everything before I even got to it. 
but that, there's still a lot of information to unpack yeah. with all this. Yeah. But those yeah. tapes were weird. You know what? They were talking about, like, they were interviewed so many people, the guy from the DA, and, and a lot yeah. of the people was like, they were asking questions about, like, they were given the initials, and, and they were, like, it was freaking weird. Well, are, you talking people, about, are you talking about the, the Sanko interview? Okay, because in that, thing. I thought, I mean, you know, what I found so interesting about that one is he claims he didn't know John Carr, but then he's calling him JC. Yeah, JC. Yeah, yeah. You call a guy by his nickname, you don't know him. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. Talk about know? people you can't trust. Right. <laughs> he, right. He's not That's exactly so uh, your, your best uh, your best source of information either. But by the end of that tape with him, it, you you get in your mind. There's no way he doesn't know him. Yeah. <laughs> he's buddies with him. Yeah, and he seems to be more concerned, more concerned about his stained glass uh, windows that he yeah. he, he didn't get back. Which that is kind of weird. I I, I kind of looked at it as kind of like deflection, you know, get, right. trying to get trying to get the interviewer off topic, right? Yeah. And maybe get his windows back. Who knows? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know what? When you look at this whole thing, you know what? David's in jail and. John and uh, Mike Carl, they, they die mysterious. One died with that weird car accident. I think the other one committed suicide. You know, when you start looking at that, you really think there's some kind of weird thing going on. Was he killed by the car? Was this guy ran off the road? Who the hell knows what happened there? Oh. So that is so much yeah. Rob, you got, you, you know, you, a good point. And just uh, throw in a few more, you know, uh, up in, what, 96, when uh, the Yonkers uh, police started reinvestigating the case uh there was i believe seven people they wanted to talk to they all lawyered up and one of them committed suicide a month later wow um, oh. you know again i i don't know what it means but uh it's all pretty strange that a guy would commit suicide um you know a, a guy that lived in berkowitz's apartment and o o over something that happened 20 years before right it's crazy you know so um yeah there's you know there's there's weird there's there's been weird stuff going on since day one of this case. And, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll do the best we can to, uh, to unpack it and see what we can find. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Great episode today. Okay. We will be doing more of these shows down the line very soon. I'd like to thank you, Neil, for being on and call as usual. Thank you. Thank you. Rob, thank you, thank you for all you do. Strong, silent type in the top left corner. I, I gotta start. I gotta start studying. <laughs> I gotta start studying with Rob because he's got to start coming on my side here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so stay tuned down the line. We're gonna have another Son of Sam Chronicles probably in a week or two, and uh, enjoy this one, the last one uh, that we got this new format with Neil. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, don't get drunk, get lumped up, but we don't say that on this show. <laughs> Don't get drunk. Don't get murdered. Yeah. Good Stay one. away like from that. the trolls. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> trolls. Yeah. yeah. Bring it on. My ankles are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting away over here. Take care, people. All right. Good, All right. Have a good Take one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. From the whole previous shootings and subsequent shootings, because the walkway right here to my left and went through a hole in the fence and committed this murder. Now, he didn't miss